live. Hey everyone, Eric Brakey here at our campaign office in Auburn, Maine. It's November 1st, uh, less than, geez, less than a week to go until election day. But I wanted to come to you live and, and actually make a big announcement. You know, through this whole campaign, I've been talking about the need for better jobs here in Maine so that we can keep our kids here, so that our kids aren't forced to move away in search of better jobs in other states like we've seen happen in Maine for a very long time. And of course, it really ramped up after Angus King bankrupted the state and, and uh, left us a billion dollars in debt that led us to a recession that we've been struggling to climb out of. We have been climbing out of that, of that recession. We have been creating more jobs, but now it's time to create the better jobs that Maine people need so that we can keep our kids here and welcome our kids back home who would like to come back to Maine if only there was the economic opportunity that we've been lacking. So I'm releasing today, I'm announcing today, we have our Better Deal for Maine a bet, a, a jobs plan. And I want to go over that a little bit with you. But before I go into the details, I want to share actually, well, some disappointment with you about the media. You know, we actually announced uh, yesterday that we were going to be doing a, a conference call with media to, to go over all this. In fact, we just got recent polling showing that uh, we're, uh, we're, geez, within seven points of Angus King with 9% undecided. This is becoming a, a horse race. You would think the media would be very interested that, you know, we have a real race on our hands and want to hear kind of what, what some of the big policy proposals are. But not a single person from the media chose to participate in this. But that's fine. I'm coming directly to you. I want to share with you our jobs plan uh, and how we're going to get better jobs for Maine. So first of all, the first cornerstone point of our jobs plan is something called economic freedom zones. So economic freedom zones basically identify some of the uh, rural, underdeveloped areas in, both in Maine and across America, places that have been left behind uh, as, as, the econ as the economy nationwide has, de has developed. Places here in Maine like Washington County, Aroostook County, Somerset County, Piscataquis. You know, we're, we're looking specifically at places that are designated already by the federal government as hub zones. And what we would do with economic freedom zones, and here, it's a lot of detail, so I'm going to refer to this to make sure I don't forget everything. So we're talking about areas with an unemployment rate that is 1.5 times the national average or a poverty rate 30% above the national average. So what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on creating economic opportunity, creating, stimulating these areas, not by doing it the typical way that big government usually does it, which is taking money from one group and giving it to another, and usually that ends up going to special interests connected to government. That actually isn't a very effective way to create jobs because it gives it to people who frankly haven't earned that money and don't know what to do with it to effectively create opportunity in our economy. Instead, we're going to be focused on leaving leaving money in the hands of the people who are already there, people who are already creating jobs, people who are already creating opportunity. Let them create more jobs and more opportunity. So we would reduce um, for, for employers investing capital to either start or grow a business, they would qualify for a 5% flat tax rate and reduce capital gains taxes for investment in these economic freedom zones, provided they're in these zones creating economic opportunity in these underdeveloped areas. Businesses in these zones would also receive a $2,000 new hire tax credit for hiring someone on public assistance. And the credit would expand to $6,000 if they're providing health care benefits uh, as well. Uh, an economic freedom zone located business would receive a $5,000 tax credit for employer, uh, employer provided education or training expenses. And individuals living in these economic freedom zones would receive a $5,900 individual tax credit for K through 12 or adult education or job training, including expenses related to apprenticeship programs. So really trying to help people invest in their own skills to be able to retool for this new economy that we're going to be building in these areas. Uh, new businesses and economic freedom zones would be exempt from collecting online, online sales tax in states in which they do not have a physical presence. And traditional main industries like fishing and our forestry industry could really flourish uh, and, and grow under economic freedom zones. 
And, and at the same time, new and emerging industries in Maine, like hemp and cannabis, could also benefit from these economic freedom zones. But, but beyond that, we could also really work to draw in new industries, new industries that we don't have much here up in Maine, like technology, uh, like uh, new manufacturing opportunities, locating to these areas because of these lower federal tax rates. You know, well-developed areas like uh, well-developed, you know, huge metropolitan areas, well-developed with strong economies. Um, they, you know, oftentimes when we do kind of this overall s stimulus, a lot of the stuff just flows to the areas that are already developed. This is really focused on helping those underdeveloped areas like we especially have here in Maine. Second point would be to focus on repatriating capital that's overseas. So American companies currently hold an estimated $2.6 trillion in overseas banks. There's actually been a lot of bipartisan support for ideas for how to repatriate this, repatriate this capital and bring it home, but frankly, there's just been so much bickering uh, that even with bipartisan agreement, this has never been taken up and done. Now, the 2017 tax, tax cuts actually led to a return of $305.6 billion in capital coming back to America in just the first six months of 2018. And that was because we took the corporate tax rates down to 21%. And so rather than paying the really high corporate tax rates they were paying before down to 21%, now uh, billions of dollars have come home. Those are being invested in economic opportunity here. And of course, tax dollars are also being collected on that that wouldn't have been collected before when it was overseas. But we're still seeing so much that's still, still over there. Um, we can do a lot more to bring more of that money home. So the next step would be to uh, to look at setting for a two-year window, kind of a, a holiday for repatriated capital. So they would get a special tax rate going down from 21% to 10% of bringing capital back here to America, investing in opportunity and, and job, job creation here, 10%. Uh, but it would be even even better if they were to invest in economic freedom zones, these underdeveloped areas. We're going to bring, I'm, I'm proposing that we, uh, in that two-year holiday, that we bring that down to just zero. Bring it back. Invest in economic freedom zones like some of our rural areas here in Maine. Create opportunities here for our, some of our underdeveloped areas. And they can repatriate that capital and invest it here in America without paying any taxes on it. Uh, and of course, more tax revenue will still come in because you're creating economic opportunity, you're creating economic activity. And again, we're not collecting any tax revenue on those dollars while they're sitting in offshore bank accounts. Bring it home, create opportunities here. The third point of this plan is to rein in some of the out of control regulations that we have in this country. Now, I certainly think that regulations can certainly play an important role and at times are, are very necessary. Uh, but when we have them, they should be efficient and they should be accountable to the people. Uh, but currently, federal regulations cost the US economy $2.9 trillion. And that was just in 2017 alone, $2.9 trillion. Now, this is excessive. And much of it has been created by completely unaccountable, unelected bureaucracies. Now, we never voted for any of these people creating these re regulations. We actually elected people in Congress to weigh in on it, and they're not. So uh, Congress is supposed to make the laws, not the executive branch. And so we need to reassert the people's power back into the legislative process. So that's why I'm saying, in part, as part of my job creation plan, I'm gonna, I support something actually that has been out there for a while that Senator King has consistently opposed and failed to support. It's called the RAINS Act. And what this would do is it would rein in a lot of these regulations by requiring congressional approval on major regulations. And by major regulations, we mean regulations that are drafted that would cost the US economy $100 million or more. Now, perhaps a regulation that costs would cost the economy $100 million or more, maybe it's a good regulation, maybe it's necessary for protecting our environment or for protecting you know, consumers. There could be a very good reason for it. And if there is, that case should be made to the American people. Our elected legislators should be weighing in on it and, and should be required to do an up or down vote if it's going to have such a big impact on us. So I think this will inject accountability into federal bureaucracy and help remove some of the job killing regulations that are you know, harming American workers. Now that's point three. Point four of the plan, and I'll do a quick overcap review when we're through all this, is to spend American tax dollars here in America. You know, we send, we've sent trillions and trillions of dollars abroad overseas. 
uh, spending on wars that go on forever. You know, just in, uh, let me make sure I got the numbers right here. You know, just in Afghanistan, we, sent, we spend $45 billion every year in Afghanistan. We spend $42 billion every year on foreign aid. We, and a lot of that is foreign aid, frankly, to countries that don't like us very much, countries that burn our flag. We also subsidize the national defense for wealthy nations that can do a lot more for themselves uh, to defend their own country. We also, we spend close to a billion dollars every year on the United nation when other countries aren't paying their fair share. We should look at bringing that money home to America, investing it here in our own infrastructure, in shoring up our promises to our seniors uh, through Social Security and Medicare uh, and deficit reduction. These are things we can do with some of these dollars that we just completely waste sending overseas. Let's bring those dollars home, like home. Let's invest it here. I'm sick and tired, frankly, of spending American taxpayer dollars to blow up and rebuild bridges in other countries. It's time to invest in infrastructure and opportunities here in America. So that's point four. Let me go back to now point five would be a, a U.S. workforce tax credit. So this would improve access to quality education and apprenticeship programs uh, by uh, to prepare Americans for the high paying jobs that we need to see here in Maine. Now that is why I support the USA Workforce Tax Credit Act, which would provide a tax credit of up to $259,000 for, any, uh, to, uh, for donations to charities, providing scholarships for K through 12 education and or scholarship for, for apprenticeship programs. This would really incentivize people uh, to, to uh, make those donations to invest in our workforce, to invest in, in skill and, and, and job training. And the sixth point is something that frankly doesn't get frankly enough attention but is very important. And that would be to support an audit of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, our central bank, is, has so much control over the ups and downs in our economy, setting interest rates and the price of money, and yet there is no accountability. We don't get to know what goes on there. In fact, uh, I actually, so I support an audit of the Federal Reserve. I actually agree with Senator Susan Collins on this, Congresswoman Shelley Pingree on this, Congressman Bruce Poliquin on this, who have all supported an audit of the Federal Reserve. But we have one member, of our congressional delegation, Senator Angus King, who doesn't think that we deserve to know what the Federal Reserve is doing to our money. Now, if you're not familiar with the Federal Reserve, this is the central bank. This is the central bank, a bank that prints trillions and trillions of dollars out of thin air, uh, drives down the value of our dollar, and frankly, hands out a lot of our money to special interests, to foreign banks, and we don't get to know what's going on there. There's no accountability. They're actually the most economically powerful organization in the world. They control the US dollar, and we don't get to know. We should get to know. There should be accountability there. Our economy should not be completely dependent on this unaccountable organization. So those are the six points of our uh, jobs plan to create better jobs for Maine and for America. And just to overview that one more time, that's one, establish economic freedom zones to drive investment. Two, repatriate capital from abroad to really invest in jobs here. Three, empower the people to rein in excessive regulations with the RAINS Act. Four, stop wasteful spending overseas and spend that money here in America. Five, invest in education with the workforce tax credit. And six, audit the Fed. So that's our jobs plan. I'm gonna be talking about this. I appreciate everyone tuning in here. We're gonna be posting all of this on our Facebook page and it's also on our website, ericbrakey.com. If you wanna check it out and read it for yourself, then go right ahead. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, to chime in and comments. I'll, I'll see if me or a staff person can answer your questions. And I do also just want to close with one really piece of exciting news. You know, we just got after these three live televised debates that we've had over the last few days, we just uh, got new polling numbers in this morning. And these new polling numbers are very exciting. They show me just seven points down with 9% undecided. Angus King is He's well under 50, just like we have consistently seen throughout. But our support, undecided voters have been flocking to our campaign. We have jumped 20 points in just the last few months. We are really, the momentum is behind us. We can really win this. We can get better jobs for Maine so our kids can stay here. We can get better health care so we can restore our one-to-one -one relationship with our doctors and get the, the middlemen, the special interests out of the way. We can have more freedom to make our own choices in our own lives with this city 500 miles away dictating how we live. We don't need that. We need a better deal for Maine. That's what I'm fighting for. And one thing you can count on is when I, if the main people give me the opportunity to represent you in Washington, 
you know, just like I've been done in Augusta. I, in Augusta, I don't follow party leadership. I don't follow the special interests. I follow the Constitution. That's what I believe in. I believe in our liberties. I believe in our freedoms. I believe in our rights to keep the money that we earn. I believe in our, our right to make our own choices in our own lives. Even if other people disagree with those choices, as long as you're not harming other people in a free country, you have the right to make those choices. That's what I'm fighting for. We are seven points down with 9% undecided. We are surging in support. We are going to win this if I can count on your support and your vote. Please, you know, election day is not too far away. Go out, don't just vote yourself. Grab five friends, bring them to the polls. Make sure everyone's voting for Eric Brakey. Make sure everyone's voting for a better deal for Maine. Because this is the choice this November. Do we, want to, do we want to renew the rotten deal that we've been getting for the last 25 years? Do we want to renew that for another six? Do we want to hand more of our freedoms and our tax dollars over to the city 500 miles away from our, from our southern border that doesn't know us, doesn't care about us, but wants to tell us how to live and how to spend our money? I don't think we need that. I think we need a better deal. So if you're ready for a better deal, I appreciate your support. Come out and vote. Bring five friends. Let's keep fighting for Maine. And the last televised debate is today. So uh, it's out on Channel 8 at noon. Be sure to tune in. Thank you, everyone. Let's keep fighting.